Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital and today we're looking at this building kit and figuring out exactly what it is. Welcome back everybody. First of all, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and hit that bell icon so that you don't miss any updates like this video. So this little building kit in no packaging whatsoever other than simple plastic is from Outland Models. Now some of you may have seen these kits available on eBay or Amazon. And what these are, they're basically these cheap resin 3D printed uh, kits that go together really simply. They're not the most detailed things in the world, but they, I think that they also serve a very special purpose in model railroading. So we're going to open this up, take a look at it, build it, and uh, we're going to see what we can do with this. So this is a kit from Outland Models. It is literally just some heat shrunk plastic around some plastic parts, no instructions whatsoever, but you don't really need that. And I've actually used these kits before. As you can see, the building right there is actually an Outland Models kit that was my indoor lumber yard on my previous layout. So I do have a history of using these kits, but let's get back to the kit at hand. So we're gonna start off by taking our utility knife and we're going to open this kit right up and take the parts out. Now, luckily this thing does not have a lot of parts and you can actually completely assemble this without using glue and that's because it's designed just to have little connectors which is what really makes this really great for beginners and people who just need buildings that don't have a lot of skill building models and these are all the pieces that it comes with it's got the interior floors as well as the exterior walls and the roof so as you can see here, we can see the little connector holes and you can see you have the male ends of the connectors and this is the roof. So, and all we have to do is literally just snap these into place. If you've ever used something like snap tight models or anything like that, I don't even know if those are still around anymore, but it's very similar to snap tight models because you don't have a lot. So what we're gonna do is we're going to be putting in the interior floors first. And one thing I really like about these is they do have the different floors already built in, which is something that's gonna make it really easy to detail in the future whenever you decide you wanna do that. So once we get the three floors in place, we're gonna go ahead and snap the back wall onto it. And you can see it just lines up and then we can just press all of the different little connectors right in place. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to start putting on the side walls and these side walls are not particular to each side. They're actually the exact same on each side. And we just snap those into the holes. And before we put the bottoms of this model on, you can see it only has two holes. That's because the rest of it is going to be mounted to the base of this model, which is included. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put that base on. And one thing I do like about a lot of these Outland model kits, not all of them come with this, but this one does come with the sidewalk built onto the front or the landing or whatever you'd like to call it. And that's one thing I really like. It makes it really easy to integrate into a city scene or a street scene of any kind. And these clamps, you can see they're very tight. And once they go on, they don't really have a tendency to pop back off. And there is our completed building. The only thing is we will be having to glue this front portion on. That's not true for every Outland model kit. Some of them have them, some of them don't, but we'll be doing that later. Now, the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting in a little bit of model putty onto those extra holes right there. And we're going to be smoothing them out so that it's a nice smooth surface when we paint this building. Next, we airbrush the building. Notice my technique, I'm using as little paint as possible. I don't want to lose any of the detail on these buildings since there is very little detail to begin with. And you'll notice that I'm wearing those nice little neoprene gloves. Those are really cheap to get. 
And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of stippling here and adding a second coat of paint, as you can see. The airbrushing did great, but also with how smooth the surface is, I really wanted to roughen it up a little bit without doing any sanding or anything like that. So the way that I do that is I will just stipple the paint with the brush and that gives me a nice even texture. The last thing that I'll do is I will paint the tops of it that concrete gray that I say used on my DPM kit, so I'll put that tutorial right up here. And I also paint the rooftop that same gray and let it dry. All right, so now it's time to detail that front fascia board that comes with the kit itself. Now, this one particularly has large brick or staggered stone sections, and I'm gonna treat them as brick. So I'm really just not quite dry brushing, but these pieces have a big enough gap to where I can easily paint the individual details without getting it anywhere else. And it's another thing that's really great about these kits. They're really great for teaching people how to paint model kits and working on your detail. And now we put a little bit of glue on the front of the building so that we can attach this fascia panel so that we can finish up the kit. One of the only things that I will do to the bottom piece that includes the front landing or sidewalk section is I will paint it that concrete gray that I do have the rest of the sidewalks painted so that it easily matches and melds in. And then I go ahead and reattach it. Notice I'm still not doing glue. One thing you may also notice is that I haven't put any sort of acrylic plastic as windows. These kits do not come with windows. Now you can certainly add those, but I use these mainly as background buildings and stuff you're not gonna see a ton of detail in and I really don't see the absolute need to put those in if you're really a stickler for details you can certainly do that so the next last thing we're really going to do is we're really going to weather this building and I'm going to start with the roof and what I'm going to do here is I'm taking my DIY weathering powder which you've seen me make in previous tutorials and I'm just trying to brush the roof because it has a lot of creases and lines in it and they're really going to stand out with that weathering powder so we're going to go ahead and do that and then we're also going to be weathering it the sides of the building as well. One tip for weathering, if you're looking for a place to uh, really start rather than just kind of going all over the place, is start with doing little runs of dirty areas down the window. So when it rains, um, any sort of dirt that's on the wall tends to flow around the windows and then come back and then go straight down from the windows, which is why you'll tend to see more dirt streaks from the window. So it's a really good, easy, realistic place to put your weathering when you're first getting started. And then the last place I really weather is the front. I'm gonna be weathering the bricks. This really gives them a weathered in look that's gonna match the rest of the buildings that we have. And I also do a little bit of weathering in some other places, including on the windows and on the sidewalk itself. And this just, it's really just using your eye here and um, just getting it to where you like it and where you see that it matches the rest of everything else. And here is the final result of this little background building. Personally, I really like it. I think it's going to go well. It's going to add a little bit of depth to my layout. And I really like that without having to spend a ton of money on foreground buildings. And here it is just kind of sat before it really gets matched up. This is kind of where it's going to be in the layout. You can see it's got a nice little spot, but it doesn't show too much. So that's Outland models. Personally, I really love them. I think they fill a bit of a space in the model kits for model railroads that there aren't really a lot of things for and that is inexpensive fill-in buildings for filling out town scenes or city scenes or that kind of stuff these are great for making background buildings they come in a variety of types and sizes there are some that are not that great but um, I think they're really great for filling out town scenes and also if you're just getting into the hobby and you just want some buildings these are really easy together put to put together building kits they are fantastic so 
Outland models, personally, I recommend them. They're really, really great. And if you haven't already, go and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that bell icon so that you don't miss any updates like this video. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Happy railroading.